What's up, y'all? This your girl, Nikwandra. It's Talk About It Thursday, and we about to get into it. I hope your Thursday is phenomenal, that it was well accomplished and full of positivity and growth, and that you're ready to wind down and relax and get into the message for tonight about friendships. We like to talk about the people we don't need in our life, but we're going to talk about tonight the people that we need to make sure we're in our life that is in our life and doing assessments of the people that we do have in our life to, to to note whether or not we need to sever some ties a little bit. But before we get into the message, we're going to pray. So bow your head and let's get into it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to wake up and blowing a breath of life into us today, God. Thank you for this message. I pray that is well received and it brings me and everybody watching a revelation in a way that it can that we can encourage that it encourages us and that we're able to share it with others in jesus name i pray amen all right let's talk about it before we talk about friendships we're going to talk about what in the world is going on in the world so that's the segment i do every time before i start the message just to like share news um that i've noticed that, that that has been brought to my attention so this is um something that i have experienced personally so i work at a school with a student and i've noticed that some of his peers are drawing these little creepy figures like they have sharp teeth they're dark they're black they got long nails it's just they love they want to draw monsters and not like creepy little monsters inks monsters like monsters and little creepy people and dudes and i'm just like where are y'all getting this influence from like when i was young i drew pictures of flowers and houses and you know cute girls with ponytails and just families you guys are drawing demonic creatures and it's cool like for example to not today monday there was a student who was telling a teacher about her watching peppa pig and she hates watching peppa pig so she decided to go on youtube and find a video of them killing peppa pig that's what she wanted to watch that entertained her then on top of that my brother sent me a video of this little dude six or seven years old being interviewed and the lady asked him what do you want to be when you grow up and he says he wants to be a murderer when he grows up because he watched an adult film and from there he found his love for wanting to kill people and that's what he wants to do the rest of his life he wants to kill everybody in the world except for his family now you tell me how in the world this is not just a one-off thing this happens a lot there the 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 crime is happening at a younger age like the people in Charlotte that shot up that house and killed that little three-year-old boy. High schoolers mainly involved in that. Crazy. We have to be mindful of the influences that is coming around the youth. The people that are going to be guiding us in our future. We have to be mindful. This, this, these, this Fortnite and Roblox and um, Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto and rap shoot a man kill a man music like it's being glorified and it's being influenced it's influencing the kids and it's not okay and i know that it's 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 easy and minecraft too and i know it's not it's easy to, and it's easy and it's like con time consuming like it takes up the child's time like less time in your face um to let them watch YouTube or whatever. But if you can't really, really, really monitor what they're watching, then I would say uh, cut it out. Um, and just leave it at that because it's like, you don't know what's going on. Like that video on YouTube where uh, they were watching a friendly, it was like a kid friendly video. And then at the end of the video, this Momo character popped up and was telling the kids to kill themselves. Like, uh, what? Like this wickedness is infiltrating the kids and it's starting early and we have authority. We have the ability to have a hand in what's going on. And so be mindful, be sober, be vigilant and pay attention to what, whether you have children or not, um, of what the kids you're connected to, your own kids are indulging in. What's their influence? Okay. 
that's what in the world for today now let's get into the message about our friendships like i said we're going to talk about what to look for in a friend not the the not the friends that you don't want to have we're looking for friends we talking about we want to dive in we want to be intentional about the friends that we need to have and also assessing the friends that we are connected with to determine whether or not we need to sever some ties okay because um we got purpose we got assignment and we don't need anyone holding us back stagnant bringing us down it's not gonna happen we're done with it okay so when the lord created us he said y'all be fruitful and go multiply he didn't say you go do this and do your thing you go do this and he said be fruitful and multiply so that means togetherness so there is an importance of togetherness and to and to coming together he also said when two or more or three or more come together in my name i am there with you there is an importance of being in connection with people choosing righteousness is sometimes lonely in the beginning because when you get into righteousness you're changing the people you're changing the people around you you're changing the activities you indulge in you're changing the way you think you talk your perception and so those old things are going to start slipping away and you're going to start walking into your newness into the character of christ because he made us into the likeness of his image and so that old stuff cannot go into our newness. So my first point is to connect with like-minded people. And I want to show you in the scripture, Proverbs 27 and 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. So you want to make sure your friend is sharpening you and you are sharpening your friend. We're not doling ourselves out um, and we're not piping down our faith to make somebody else comfortable walk in your newness walk in your truth and do it unapologetically if and at the center of that friendship should be god your goals and your growth if it ain't in if those three things ain't in the midst in the middle at the center of that friendship i don't want it it's not for me because God is at the center of everything I do and I'm making goals and I am growing. So if another person that is connected to me or, or desires to be connected, me, connected to me has none of those attributes or none of those um, desires, then uh, I don't want them and neither should you. Okay. Second point is choose to live right intentionally. Do your best daily. Intentionally do your best daily. Go to Romans 14 and 13. It says, so let's stop condemning each other. Decide to live instead. Decide instead to live in such a way you will not cause another believer to stumble. So first, intentionally decide to live right. Intentionally decide to live right so that you do not cause another person to stumble and fall not another person another believer to stumble and fall for example for example if i was on here sharing the the, the law and the gospels of god and in real life real time i was in the back smoking and drinking and having sex and getting high and doing whatever i wanted to do I'm causing you to stumble because you see me doing all that stuff. So you think it's okay to do because I'm a Christian. So she's a Christian so she, and she's smoking and drinking and still doing all that. So it must be okay for me to do it. But really, I'm causing you to stumble in your faith. I'm causing you to fumble your salvation because I'm not truly living right. And you're looking to me. So don't don't be that stumbling block for another person. person. Choose intentionally to serve and live right to the best of your ability um and you can cause someone to stumble intentionally which is the example that i just gave or unintentionally just with you being unknowing you're new you if you're new in your walk with christ there are going to be things that you do that you don't necessarily know is um unrighteous or ungodly and so as you're learning and you're growing and if you ever notice you're doing your you notice you're doing something that is ungodly or unrighteous repent 
each and every time, especially before you go to bed, you need to be asking God for forgiveness for your sins, those known and unknown. And that if you've caused anybody to stumble in your walk today, forgive you, ask him for forgiveness for that as well, sorry. Because you don't want to be the reason someone else loses out or misses out on their salvation with um, Christ and their eternal life. And it'll be good to also ask where you stumbled at and where you may have called somebody so that you can go to them directly and say, hey, I did this and I don't want you to think that's okay. That's accountability. Let's get into that. Um, my third point is to be honest with each other. Another scripture, another scripture in Proverbs that talks about good advice. It says Proverbs is in Proverbs 12 and 26. It says the godly give good advice to their friends and the wicked lead them astray. Now, this really touched me in my spirit because I have experience with both friends who give good advice and then friends who led me astray from my faith. And um, it was really um, detrimental to our friendship like and then to even be able to notice that if you notice your friends who give you worldly advice or advice that isn't very sound or they're just telling you what you want to hear you need to get away from those friendships you need a friend that's going to love you enough to check you in your mess out of love because you have to have accountability in that friendship you got to walk righteously in that friendship and you both may stumble and fall but there's repentance there's forgiveness there for you there's grace there's mercy there for you but don't allow your friend to continue walking left when they need to be going right with christ find your friend that loves you enough to check you in your mess check your friend right now in their mess don't allow them to walk and be doing whatever and you just want to keep them happy as your friend no if you love them you got to correct them in their um downfall and that that's a good attribute to look for in a friend somebody that's going to check you in your mess y'all respect each other and y'all are honest with one another and my last point is point number four respect each other respect each other's time emotions boundaries um everything respect each other if you got a friend who feel like you, your friend should not feel like they can call you repeatedly they should they should call you and and you gotta immediately answer the phone and if that if you don't answer the phone it's a problem find you a friend that respects your time that understands that you have a life they have a life and if you don't answer the phone you must be doing something and you still love them anyway um because we both we all need time to ourselves we need time for rest we need time to um just entertain ourselves we need time to get work done um we don't have time to sit around and gossip on the phone or do text message or um just wasting time find you a friend who respects your time and your boundaries if you got a friend if if you don't drink and your friend is coming around bringing drinks to you or drinking around you and they know that's a temptation for you not a good friend you need to find another one find your friend that's going to respect that if you're not drinking and they know you're not drinking they know that it's a temptation for you they don't bring drinks around you or if they know simply if you're on a diet and your friend knows you're on a diet your friend is going to come around you and, and eat good to support you. Find your friend that supports you, whatever you're going after. If um they got something sly to say after every comment, every every goal, you tell them, like you say, you want to do this. And they say, oh, that's good. But some negative, oh, that might not be a good option for you. That might be not, may not be somebody you want connected to you. I hope this is making good, good sense because it's important. Our connections are important. People we allow in our lives are important because your spirit, your spirits become familiar. You start to take on some of the characters of the people that are around you. It's like people say, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are because you are similar to the people that you attract. 
the people who you want to be around, the people who you grow with and have fun with and hang out with. So let's go over these characteristics. Characters of a good friend, bullet point by bullet point. They celebrate you. They correct you. They pray for you. They respect you and your boundaries. They are loyal and reliable. Again, they celebrate you. They correct you. They pray for you. They respect you and your boundaries. They are loyal and reliable. The friends you don't want to have or you need to be assessing to make sure your friends have none of these characteristics or attributes. They are envious and low-key jealous of you. They encourage or tolerate your poor choices or choices that your 30 year old self or your 10 year old self from now would not be happy with um they have lots of negative things to say they are unreliable and they don't respect your boundaries or any of your time check that out those bullet points everything i just went all over four of those points and make sure that you have these qualities in your friend. The first point again was they can you you need to connect with like-minded people. Make sure that they are like-minded with you physically, mentally, and spiritually. Iron sharpens iron. Point two, you they they choose to live right and they intentionally do their best every day. Point three, that they are honest. And you guys can be honest with each other. And point four is that you guys respect each other. That, that is what you want to have at the base of your friendship. God, goals, and growth. So, listen to the scripture I came across during Bible study one day this week. It's in 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. It says, if someone claims, I know God, but does not obey commandments, that person is a liar and is not living the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show him how completely they love him. And that is how we know we are living in him. Those who obey God's word and truly show how completely they love him obey his commandments that is how you show god's love from him for him that should be at the base of your friendship i know god is not enough you actually have to apply god's word into your life into your friendship so that you truly know that you are living in god that's when you really get the experience with him the more time you spend with somebody the more you get to know them. Choose to spend time with God. Choose to put God at the center of your friendships. Choose to grow in God. Choose to create goals that are going to please your Father God. This is good. Friendships are so deeply important. Connections are so deeply important important get out of the mindset that i don't need this person i don't need anyone you do you do and i know that a lot of that i don't need anybody comes from her in the past because i have that experience from family and friends i have that experience but through the word of god the lord has softened my heart changed my perception and now i understand the value of connecting with people and i'm so keen on who i connect with and who i hang out with and spend my time with because i need to continue to grow i need the father in my life and i don't want to introduce open any doors that are that is going to put me outside of his grace and his mercy put me outside of my assignment and my purpose and i wish and i pray the same for you that you have that conviction and that understanding that you have to be mindful of the people that you're connected to what comes through your eye gate what you listen to so that you do not get off an of assignment and that you fulfill your purpose before it is your time to go we don't have a second promise to us we have to get in glory now we have to get in position now we have to prepare stay ready so you do not have to get ready you need to be preparing every day evangelize share the word of god it is time 
to get off of the sidelines and do your work. It's social media everywhere. You can share a scripture every day. You can um 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 just tell somebody God bless you, God loves you, whatever. But make sure you are spreading the good news of God. Letting somebody know that God cherishes and cares about them is so important. Do your work, stay focused, and stay on the mission. Okay. Now, if 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 you heard this message and you received it oh so well, um, like it is sitting in my spirit so well right now. Um, I just want to offer you this wonderful father that I'm speaking about. Um, and if you want him, I need you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord, I have sinned and fallen short of your honor and principles set for my life. God, I come to you today to ask for your forgiveness of my sins. Search my heart, Lord, and if you may find anything unclean or stained, God, I ask that you clean it and make me a new heart for you, Father. For I believe that you died and rose with all power on the third day to save me, Father. I believe that by my faith in you, I am saved and by your stripes, I am healed. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer and you are um, ready to receive Christ, I mean, if you said that prayer, obviously you just received Christ. But let me know so that you can properly be celebrated and then I can um, hit, point you to the next step, which is to find a church home if you don't have a church home. And um, 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 if you do have a church home, go to your church and let them know that I just gave myself to Christ and, and, and I am um, ready to get on assignment to make sure that I am working in purpose and bringing God all the glory um, that he deserves. Thank you so much for watching um, and listening to those who are on Spotify or any audio streaming platform. This has been a wonderful time spent remember your friendship should be based god goals and growth that's it if it ain't in the center if he is not in the center of it adios amigo or amiga okay you guys have to grow in the spirit as well um indulge in the in the kingdom of god and not in the mess of this world also remember Plant seeds into the children, good seeds into the children. Plant good seeds into the children. Monitor what they're watching. Teachers, do not be playing a bunch of YouTube videos for your kids, okay? Um, sing them a song, read them a book, make it fun, animate it. But like, let's lessen the, the, the YouTube attention while they're under 10 years old. Um, let's do that. Um, all right, friends, so have an amazing night. I hope your Friday is spectacular and that your weekend is even better. Get ready for Sunday to receive a good word from whoever your pastor is. Be fed in the spirit and fed in the flesh. Eat real good, okay? Eat real good on Sunday and rest, all right? You guys have an amazing night. God bless you.